Hello and welcome back to Chiefsman's Corner. Like last week, this is not a live broadcast as I am still adjusting temporarily to the wife not working nights for the next couple of weeks. Uh, this also isn't out on a Monday, unfortunately. I had to delay a day. However, this will be up at Tuesday at the normal 9 p.m. Eastern time slot, and I will be online and available to answer and respond to comments from those watching the premiere. I am your host, one of the leadership team of the WFL, Coach Winovus of the Detroit Lions. This show will dive into our Week 7 games, our players of the podcast, and unlike last week, there won't be a soapbox. However, there also won't be an Ask the Chief segment, as there was no question submitted by the time I recorded today. A short but sweet podcast in 2022 with, as I will be on hiatus due to the holidays until early January. At that point, we should have playoffs to discuss, some draft to discuss, and lots of other exciting things. If anyone's tuned in during the premiere, welcome aboard and thanks for listening. As always, you can comment in YouTube chat and I will be on to respond to any and all comments. If you are watching the recording of this, however, we still thank you for watching. Any and all support is appreciated. Without you guys, the WFL doesn't exist. As always, with our housekeeping notes, the first thing I talk about is the WFL's incentive plan. This plan allows you to get some perks that aren't available for every member simply by doing some extracurricular activities that involve WFL. Anything from Twitter to articles on the Neon Sports site to commenting or participating in this show, even chatting in Discord can earn you points. Anything that makes WFL a more immersive experience and increases its presence in the Madden community earns you some sort of credit. Link to the incentive plan is available using the command slash incentive plan in Discord. That is all one word, slash incentive plan in Discord. The next thing to talk about is the form Ask the Chief, which no one used this week. Use this form during the week between episodes, though, to submit any questions you have for me, and I'll answer them during the show, giving you credit for the question. It's an easy way to build up incentive points and provide extra content for the podcast. Use the command slash Ask the Chief to pull up the form in Discord. Again, that is all one word, slash Ask the Chief in Discord. We are still efforting to get some quality owners for our current openings, which are the Seahawks and the Browns. If you know of any owners that would be a good fit, please send them an invite to the Discord chat so we can we can get them full. With housekeeping out of the way, let's recap scores from Week 7 action and highlight our offensive and defensive of the players of the podcast from Week 7. Right, here we go into the stats line for Week 7 as I get this bad boy up and running. We have our Game of the Week which I will blow up a little bit. Game of the week is the 6-1 Denver Broncos going to face the now 6-1 Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota suffers their first loss of the season, 49-21 as they fall to the red-hot Denver Broncos. Denver moves to 6-1 on the year. Minnesota falls to 6-1 on the year, Keep trying to keep pace with the Green Bay Packers in the NFC North. Uh, new owner, uh, Little Outlaw. Uh, is losing to the New York Jets and Kobe Burris. 42-22 to is your final here. New York moves to 6-1 on the season, while New England falls to 2-5 on the season. And a little bit of what I would... I, I don't know if I could consider this an upset because Carolina is a really good team. But Carolina squeaks out a win, a four-point win, over the Indianapolis Colts, the AFC defending champs. 28 to 24 is your final here. Carolina moves to 4 and 3 on the season, while Indianapolis is struggling at 3 and 4 trying to find answers in a really tough and crowded AFC. A simulated game between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Detroit Lions doesn't go the Lions way as they fall 27 to 19 to the Chargers. The Chargers move to 5 and 3 on the season, while Detroit falls to 2 and 6. Uh, Buffalo with a, I don't, I wouldn't say it's an upset, but it definitely is a, uh, an embarrassment there for the Bills as they fall to four and three and lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 44 to 10 is your final there. Tampa Bay moves to five and two on the season. Houston continues their hot run as they move to 6-1 and one with a 27-17 victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. After a little bit of a hot start from the Steelers, they're starting to cool off a little bit as they fall to 3-4. and four. Have to make up some ground there in a competitive uh, NFC North with the Bengals kind of starting to run away with it. The Steelers have to make some ground up really quick. The Cardinals and the Saints played each other in Week 7, and the Cardinals win 30-14 over the Saints. Arizona moves to three and four on the season, while the Saints fall to two and five. The Eagles overcome the Cowboys, thirty-four to twenty-three is your final there. Dallas falls to three and five under new ownership, and the Eagles move up to two and five, trying to recover from a really, really rough start in a very, very tough NFC East. 
a little bit this one definitely is would be in the upset category the bears up in the commanders 27 to 23 is your final there washington surprisingly falls to six and two on the regular season while chicago moves up to three and four on the regular season in a simulated game the falcons come away with a three-point upset thanks to the madden gods over the miami dolphins miami falls to 500 at four and four and need to make up some ground in a tough afc if you don't win a division you have to be successful and right now 500 won't cut it while the falcons move up to four and three in a respectable move uh, from the seller of last year up to uh, the midway point of the division for the Atlanta Falcons, still within striking distance of the top of the NFC South. Uh, Green Bay continues to be undefeated on the season. 45-27 to is your final over the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City falls to 1-5 and five after a playoff run last year. The Chiefs are coming back to earth really hard this season and struggling to find some answers on defense. Uh, Rams overcome the Seattle Seahawks 24-13 is your final. The CPU Seahawks are 1-7 and, and the Los Angeles Rams are 3-4 and four on the season. And then finally, your last game of the docket, a simulated game. The San Francisco 49ers overcome the Jacksonville Jaguars 41-35 is your final. Jacksonville falls to 1-6 and, and San Francisco moves up to 3-4 and four in a very non-competitive but competitive nfc west it looks like the nfc west is trying to mimic what the a nfc south is doing in real life uh with uh with some success there there's not a lot of winning records there in the nfc west as we move on to our players of the podcast our offensive player of the podcast is going to be panthers wide receiver robbie anderson he had five catches for 44 yards which doesn't sound like a ton and normally it wouldn't be but the last number is the most important number, three touchdowns in a 28-24 win over the Colts. Basically, red zone threats looks like there uh, and got the job done. 21 points when you win by four points over the Colts. That makes all the difference in the world. Defensive player of the podcast, I picked a guy who did a little bit of everything. Normally, I like to shout out some of the lower tier owners and with players that did well, but this one... Uh, I couldn't help but shadow this guy. Jets defensive tackle Addison Posey. He had half a sack. He had a forced fumble. He had two fumble recoveries. And the big man even got a touchdown in a 49-22 win over the New England Patriots. And that, my friends, is it for this podcast. This is not a long one by any stretch of the imagination at all. Uh, this will be by far the shortest one I've ever done. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up real quick. This is the last one until 2022, or till 2023, I should say. Uh, I want to thank you guys this entire year of 2022 for tuning in, whether it's been during the premieres, been during the live when I've been doing it live, or after the fact. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, the WFL appreciates it, and we all hope that you are entertained by the show. As always, let us know by throwing us a like, a subscribe, or leaving any and all comments. Feedback of any type, good or bad, is always appreciated. And until 2023, folks, this corner is closed. <laughs>